Hi, this is Jody from Puppy Winkle, and this week I worked with Emboss Ink. It's also called Clear Ink or Watermark Ink. And it's really just kind of a sticky, clear ink pad, and it has some great effects, and I'm going to show you some of the things I did. The one thing I will say is you also you need the ink and you also need a stamp and the stamp I picked has tiny thin um, markings and that worked so well. I have other stamps that are fatter like this one so the imprint that goes down is a fatter area and that did not look as nice. So the thin I thought the thin writing, the thin imprint looked really good. So check out your stamps and see if you have any thin ones because that's what I would recommend you try is the thin kind. So I'm going to show you some of the techniques I used and how to do them. I'm going to leave a link in the description um, to the watermark ink in case you don't have any because it's it's pretty cool. So the first thing I do is with a tiny little piece like this and a big stamp like this I just kind of ink up part of it. And they say if you're using a whole big stamp and a whole big piece of paper you can use a brayer. You want to put it down and not move it. You can use a brayer to roll over it to make sure the imprint works, but with this tiny piece, I, I find that it just moves it around too much and I don't get a nice impression. So with a tiny piece like this, I just like to push it down with my fingers. Now this is the most basic technique, just the emboss ink on a stamp So here's what it looks like on this particular piece of paper um, or cardstock. It essentially just made a dark, a darker impression of the color. So it looks like I stamped on it with a dark blue ink. And that's what the watermark does. And it totally depends on what kind and color of cardstock or paper you use. This had a bit of a, um, a texture to it and maybe a bit of shine as well and so it's not nearly as obvious as the one I just did. This is a thin piece of craft paper and it seems like the darker the darker um, colors of paper come out more obvious. Although here, here's a dark one and it was shiny and you can barely see that. This is a paint sample. So yeah, big experimental curve there to just see what anything's going to look like. I think my favorite's this with the, with the darker. I think that looks just so pretty. And I'll show you what I made with some of these things. So that's the easiest. The second step is to do the same thing and then heat emboss it. So I use some gold heat embossing powder and I'll link to that too. So this gold powder I have is very, very sticky. It's very thin and if I poured it on this page and then tried to funnel it back into the container, a, a lot of it would stick here. So the first thing I do is I just powder this up. This is a powder bag. If you don't have one of these, you can use cornstarch, you could use baby powder and just you know dust it on very lightly and brush it off with a a brush, a paintbrush, whatever. You, totally not necessary. 
I just like to get all my residual powder left over. I like to get it back. So <laughs> that's just me. You also want to do it, if you can, on, on whatever you're going to be stamping because you don't want the residual powder to mess up your imprint. So you use your embossing powder again, pretty much just the same as before. Ink up your stamp with the thin impressions. Press it down gently but firmly without moving it at all. And then, can't even see it, but it's there. You, you pour on your gold embossing powder, heat embossing powder. And with something this small, I tend to use tweezers. Now look, look what I did. I knocked some up. Can you see it? I knocked some off. Down here. And so all you do, because this stuff stays sticky a while, you put it, you just put it right back over and it covers it. Now I don't know if you can see it, but there's some stray. There are some stray pieces. One way to get rid of strays is blow, which actually, that pretty much did it. That pretty much got rid of the strays. But another way to do it, you could, you could use a little soft brush to get in there. And that's what the powder stops. Like it would be a lot worse if I had not used the powder. So anyway, put that down a minute. Now I have done multiple um, stamp, 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 then powder, 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 powder. I don't know how long before it dries out. You know, it might be, it might be five minutes. It might be three minutes. I don't know, but you can, it's not as, it's not like in the second you emboss it, you have to powder it. Like it's, you've got some time. So anyway, then I want to get my powder back my embossing powder and see even there's still some on there even though I powdered that page this is super super sticky powder so then the next step is to heat emboss it I use just a piece of cardstock that I put double-sided tape on on paces now these I've already heat embossed but I just left them there so you'd see them and then I pick it up with tweezers because I don't want to, I don't want to mess up any of the impressions. And then I just put it down on this double-sided tape, which works over and over and over again. So I'm going to go heat emboss this and I'll be right. So the reason I put it on this paper to heat emboss it is because the heater is hot and I can't hold it and not burn my fingers. It's so tiny that if I do try to hold it, I'm going to smear it all around, which I actually did because I bumped it with the heat embosser right there. But anyway, so the, and, and if I just try to lay it down and heat emboss it, it's going to blow away. So that's why you have to keep these little things. That's why you have to keep them still. So I'm just going to continue this little exercise with another one that is not all mucked up. So the second part of doing this is if you want, you can go around the edges. I don't know if you can tell the difference. Here's one. Here's one when I didn't go around the edges. And here's one where I went around the edges. And I think it gives it a really nice finished look. So I'm going to show you how I did that. So that's that would be a second step. You can't do it all at once. You have to heat emboss the top first. And then you have to do the side. But I, I do think it's worth it. So all you do is 
you just hold it kind of what is it called perpendicular perpendicular to the to the stamp and just roll it around a couple times and don't drop it like that so I'm rolling the edges and then I should have left it on the paper quite frankly I shouldn't have put it back in here <laughs> because now we need it back here again. So then I roll it around and just cover just the edge. Again, I'll give a little blow and I'm gonna go heat and bust this. Here it is. After I heat emboss it a second time with the with the rim with the circular frame around it, and it is it's subtle, but I think it adds I think it adds a really nice a really nice finish to it. The next thing I did, always experimenting, is I colored it in. I used um, my alcohol markers. And I colored in the flowers and the leaves, and then I colored the background. And all of a sudden, I'm looking at cloisonne. You know that that Chinese artwork with the gold. I'm thinking, what? And so now, what I want to try is to give it an overall sheen, like to to make it look more like clothes and a to make the whole thing shiny. So I'm going to try it. We'll see. <laughs> so I've embossed this twice, once on the front and then once around the edges, heat embossed it. And then now I'm going to do it a third time. Then I colored it in. Then I'm going to do it a third time. I'm going to cover the whole thing with my embossing ink and I have a clear, I have a clear, high gloss clear it's called, embossing powder. And I'm going to see if we can close and a this bad boy all the way. And it is, it's so fussy when you're working with these tiny pieces. You just don't want to, you know, you don't want to touch anything. So there it is. Now, how do I get it down there without ruining the finish? Hmm. Because I want it to stick to the tape. I don't want it flying away but I don't want to take any of the powder away either. Let me say, give it a little blow. All right, I'm going to try it. <gasps> Look at that. That is pretty darn cloisonne. We'll call it fosonne. <laughs> I'm funny. Yeah, I'm loving that. Now the next thing I'm thinking, see, here we go. See, this was just a last minute addition. Um, now I'm thinking my beloved glossy accents. Maybe instead of that last, instead of that last clear embossing, maybe glossy accents would give it a little more height. I don't know. I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. But anyway, I, I'm pretty, pretty darn psyched about that. So let me just quickly show you a couple of things I made. This was... This was just the plain embossing on the blue, then some gold embossing on this piece, and then a little little fun addition there. So that would be a nice a nice little focus piece somewhere. This guy, this little Christmas tag, this background is heat embossed with the gold and then 
the I did the circle around it. See that that frame really adds a lot. And then I colored it in and then I put the Santa on top. And then what else? This one is gold embossed and colored. So, oh, and then look, this, she's cool. This is, this is one of my relatives from a long time ago. So I did the gold embossing around there, kind of like a frame and then put her on top. So, so let me know if you have any good ideas how to use this technique or any of these ideas that spring something in you and uh, I hope you give it a try. Thanks for watching.